Okay, hi everybody, my name's Sam. Um, you've obviously heard a lot in the talks this morning about the importance of keeping your horses at the correct weight. So what we're going to go through in this session is just how you can assess your own horse's condition. So hopefully you can have something to take away with you that you can long term assess the body weight of your own horses. Um, you may well have heard of it called condition scoring. Um, along with Dotton and Horrell, we tend to call it fat scoring. And the reason for that is that when you talk about the condition of a horse, we all tend to think about sort of their overall appearance and their outline, what sort of muscle tone they've got, whether they look healthy. We are only looking at the amount of fat they're carrying, so that's why we call it fat scoring, because it tends to be a bit clearer what we're, what we're assessing. We use a five point condition scoring system. Um, there is a nine point as well, which you may have come across, but the reason we use the five point is again, Dalton and Horrell have, have found that it's just as reliable as the nine point, but it's a little bit easier to use if you're not familiar with it, because obviously remembering nine points is going to be a bit more difficult than remembering five. Um, and also you are allowed to use half points on the systems and half points with a nine point gets a bit complicated. And uh, one of the most important things to remember is you can't tell how much fat a horse is carrying just by looking at them. You've got to get your hands on and feel for the fat cover. Um, on that five point system, for any of you who are not familiar with it, it ranges from zero, which is emaciated, up to five, which is obese. So um, those two uh, horses at the end of Teresa's presentation this morning, the dark bay and the liver chestnut, are the two extremes of that scale. Um, and what you're aiming for as an ideal is between a two and a three. Um, so a two is more likely to be your racehorses and eventers and a three is more likely to be your leisure horses. But again, as they mentioned this morning, um, they, they should, in an ideal world, fluctuate between those two across the course of a year. So in the wild, they would fluctuate more than we, they do when we've got them domesticated. Um, so a two coming out of the winter and a three going into the winter is absolutely fine. Now, um, so the most important thing to remember is you can't tell how much fat they're carrying by looking at them. But having said that, I'd like you just to have a look at Grace and, uh, and see what you think of her condition just by eye. Do you think she's too fat, too thin, about right? Too fat? So do you want to put a number on it on that score system? About four. Anybody think anything different? Three and a half? Oh, so you think she's okay? Okay. Right, so, we, so we've got quite a range there from looking fine to, to, to being fat. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll actually go through scoring her um, and, uh, and tell you what I find and whether I, uh, whether I agree with any of you or not. Um, now what I'm going to feel for the best way I can describe it to you is if you think about what your muscle on your arm feels like and then if like me you've got a wobbly bit underneath that's the difference between fat and muscle so basically if it wobbles then it's not muscle. So what I'm going to do, sorry Grace, is I'm going to split Grace into three, into three different sections, not literally. I'm going to give her one score out of five for her neck and shoulder, one for her middle and one for her bottom and I'm going to take an average. And the reason that we do that rather than just taking the horse as a whole is um, obviously just like with people, horses tend to store fat in different places across their body. So you might have a horse that's got a perfect middle but a fat neck and a fat bottom um, or vice versa. So by taking that average, then obviously we're allowing for those, that fat stored in different places. And also it will help you on your own horses identify if they've got a particular danger area that you need to keep an eye on. Um, and one other thing I'd say before I start is what we all tend to do, understandably because people store it there, is we tend to look at the horse's stomach to see whether or not they're the right weight. Um, I would suggest you try not to do that for a number of reasons. One is that they don't store a lot of fat on their stomach anyway. Um, but probably more importantly, it can be quite deceptive looking at their stomach because if they've been out of grass, obviously they get that typical grass belly where they get the digestive gases, make them expand. Um, obviously, if they're not in a lot of work, then they're not well muscled, so it doesn't sort of hold everything in. And obviously, if they're, if they're a brood mare, had a few foals, then it can all be a little bit saggy down there as well. Um, so I, what I'd suggest is if you sort of draw an imaginary line level with the point of the shoulder, you want to assess the fact they're carrying above that line. So what I'm going to do to start with is I'm going to feel along the top of Grace's neck and uh, what I said before about if it wobbles. <laughs> Poor Grace, she's so fed up with me by now. <laughs> so, you, you can quite clearly see there that she has got quite a build up of fat along the top of her neck. Oh, I'm sorry, darling. Um, but what I also want to look at in this area is, um, is the shoulder blade because what they tend to do is it, they, they can store fat in front of the shoulder as well. So if I run my hand down her neck and onto her shoulder, Ideally, her, her shoulder would stop my hand and you get a very clear definition of that shoulder blade. Um, if she's carrying too much fat, then obviously my hand would just run straight from, from the neck onto the shoulder without stopping. So you can see she's got a bit of a build up of fat in front of the shoulder, but it's nothing like the quantity she's got on the top of her neck. Um, and I'd also feel for the pointer shoulder, which I can feel quite easily. It's not, it's not buried under fat. So on that five point system, I'd be giving her a four for the neck and shoulder area. Then moving on to her middle, 
Um, what you next thing you want to do is, if you lay your hand across your horse's spine, and then just let it relax. What you're feeling for is ideally you'd like them to have quite a curve over their spine. And even with a native breed like her, where then they are quite broad, they should still have that curve over their back because the breadth comes from lower down, comes from their rib cage. Um, now, if I lift my hand off her, you can see that there isn't much of a curve. It's not completely flat. It could have filled in even more than it already has, but what she's got is a build-up of fat either side of the spine, um, and, uh, and there's not the curve there that I'd really like to see. But we also want to feel for her ribs. What you want to do is run your hand fairly firmly down the horse's side, but not so firmly that they move over, and you're feeling for ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum of the ribs, which I'm not sure she's got any. <laughs> She, the last two or three will be easier to feel um, and if I press very firmly I can just feel the last two or three um, but up here she might as well not have any to be perfectly honest um, and another thing to look out for again particularly on native breeds is they can store fat in pockets behind the shoulder so you can see she's got a little bit of a love handle here um, with your own horses if you just keep an eye out for that and if they do have a significant pocket of fat just allow sort of half a score extra um, to make up for that so say because she's got she hasn't got a completely flat back but it's it's almost there and because the ribs are so difficult to feel i'd actually be going for four and a half on her middle um, and then moving on to her bottom what you're looking for there is a <laughs> sorry darling um a three would be a sort of a, a rounded c shape on its side a sort of rounded curve and again like with their back what happens when they build the fat up is they store it either side of the spine and it sort of will square off and then build up into an apple shape with a gutter down the middle. So I don't know if those of you are standing sort of further towards the front, you can see um, that, I know because I've done this already today, um, she has got the, the beginnings of a gutter down her back. But what I also want to do is feel for her hip bones, see whether they're buried or whether they're easy to feel, and also feel for the top of the pelvis as well. And then if you run your hand down, as you want to try and feel for the tailbone, um, and actually hers is fairly well buried with, it, with pockets of fat around the back as well. Um, so she hasn't got a really big gutter, she could have more build up of fat here, um, but she has got more fat there than I'd like to see, so that would be a four as well. So we've got a four on her neck and shoulder, a four and a half in her middle and a four on her bottom. So she's around about a four overall, so those of you who said she was fat, you're right, she is. Um, but what we have also found is that her middle is her danger area because she's carrying a bit more there than anywhere else. Hello Dale, this is Dale, everybody. Um, now what I'll do first of all is I'll just show you how to use the weight tape um, and then we'll go through some fat scoring with him as well. Um, I don't know if any of you use weight tapes regularly, um, but the one I've got here is a Dodson and Horrell tape which has a horse side and a pony side. So what I'll do is I'll pop the pony side, sorry Dale you are only little, um, and you want to put it at the lowest point of the withers and making sure it's not twisted, if I can find it. You want to bring it as close as possible to the point of the elbow. So it doesn't sit where the girth goes, it's actually a little bit further forward. And then you just read the weight off. He's coming out at about 205 kilos. And the important thing to remember is you should, you should weigh your horses at the same time of day every time you do it, because just like with people, their weight will fluctuate quite a significant amount over a 24 hour period. I weigh myself in the morning because I know I'm lighter then. So <laughs> as long as you're consistent, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so, um, any thoughts on, on Dale's condition? Do you think he's too fat, too thin, about right? He's a little better, but he's not as overweight. Okay. I don't think he's that overweight, actually, and he hasn't got a gutter, and he hasn't got a crest properly, but you have to, you know, you have to feed it. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to have a go? And, but you can, you can feel his um, spine very well there, and I can feel the, the top of his, um, his tail. Mm -hmm and I can feel his hip bones, and bless him, I can just about feel his ribs. There is a layer there, but I can still feel them. So I would say he was about a three and a half. Okay, anybody else like a guess? No, nobody brave enough? Okay, I'll do it then. Okay, um, right, I'll have to move his mane out of the way. But yeah, I think probably the, those of you who've had a go can have, have noticed he does have a bit of a wobble along the top of his neck. Um, so uh, he has got a build up there. But actually in front of his shoulder, his shoulder is quite easy to feel. It's, you can actually, if I put my hand there, you can see the defini definition of the shoulder blade as well. Point of the shoulder is easy to feel. So although he's got a build up on the top of his neck, 
the shoulder is actually very good. So I'd actually be going for three and a half on the neck and shoulder. Moving on to his middle, again, for those of you who haven't had a go, the curve I'm getting on his back is like that. So he's got a good curve over his back. And feeling for the ribs, actually, they are really, really quite easy to feel. And any of you who want to have a go at, at, at that afterwards, please do. But um, because he's got quite a big belly, your eyes drawn there and you tend to think he's storing fat there but actually you can feel those surprisingly easily can't you those of you who had a go so i'd be going for three in his middle as well and then moving on to his bottom he's got that nice sort of c-shaped curve i can feel his hip bones and his pelvis and i can feel his tailbone as well so i'd be going for three on his bottom so he's got a three and a half a three and a three so he's about right he's got a bit of a build up on his neck but so that's obviously his danger area. But if I tell you that when he came in, he was a five, and if you get the chance to have a look at the pictures of him outside his stable from when he came in, he was a lot bigger.